When I first decided that I was going to do a video on the mouse tools within the range view, I figured at the beginning of the video I would just tell anyone who is familiar with Studio One that you may want to skip the video and you probably already know the information. But as time went by while I was preparing for the video, that kind of completely changed. And if you're on the fence, if you're familiar with Studio One and you're not sure whether you're going to stick through the video, I definitely recommend checking out uh, the complete tutorial because I think you'll find that there's a lot of nuggets of cool features and useful features that will help you out in your workflow. And certainly if you're new to Studio One, uh, this isn't the most exciting topic, but if you stick through it, I think you'll find some things here that will really help you out in the long run. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to talk about the tools up above here, uh, specifically in how they're used within the Arrange view. And we're not going to be talking about the editor. Uh, that's going to be a, a completely different video. But we're just discussing these and how we can use them effectively. What are their features within our song and Arrange view here? So let's just jump right in. We can access our tools, of course, by clicking up above here on the icons. We can also cycle through these by pressing the number keys on our QWERTY keyboard. So one will be the arrow tool, two is the arrange tool, three split tool, four erase, five is the paint, six is the mute, seven the bend, and eight is our mute tool. And I'll press one and come back to the arrow tool. If we right click in an empty area of our arrange view, we can also choose the tools this way as well. And if you note the paint tool, if we hover on this, we can access its different modes here through this pop-up menu. One other way is that we can click with our mouse wheel and then we can choose our tools that way as well. Now by default when we create a new song the arrow tool is going to be active and it's going to be in a smart mode so that if I were to come to an event here and when I'm in the bottom half of this event, I have the arrow tool. As I move past the center line here, I then switch to the range tool and then I can click and hold and select a range. And I can even just press delete and delete that out. I'll control Z to undo. But just know that as we move above or below that center line, we change between the range tool and the arrow tool. If you don't want that feature to be enabled, then we would just click this here. And then now, no matter where I uh, float the mouse, we're going to always have the arrow tool. But I'll go ahead and turn that back on. Next, we have a drop down menu here where we can choose an alternate tool so that when we're working in our song, if I were, if we press down control, whatever we have selected here is going to pop up as an alternate tool. So if I select the range tool and then come down to the bottom here when we're, we have the arrow tool, when I hold control, we see we have the range tool. Now, if I come back to this menu and choose the split tool, I'll hold control. Now we have the split tool. We could also just repeatedly press one. And if you notice this underline here is going to move to each one. And then now we're on the mute tool. So if I press control, we have the mute tool. So just pay attention to this line. And then this will tell you where you are in that alternate tool function when you're working within the arrange view. And I'm just going to cycle back by pressing one to the range tool. Now the paint tool has a similar feature. And if we select this, we have this drop down arrow. We can then choose different modes here. We could also just repeatedly press five to then cycle through. You can see these changing the transform tool there. And now back to the standard paint tool. Now let's press one and come back to the arrow tool and talk about some of its features. Now, of course, we can use the tool to move our events left and right. And when we're moving left and right, just know that whatever your uh, quantize value is set at, it is going to take note of that. If you have the snap to grid on, if I press N and turn that off, then we can move that freely wherever we'd like. One other thing to take note of is this adaptive here. And so th this basically adapts to the snap function to whatever your zoom level is. So as I'm, I have the quantized value set to half, half note. So this should snap. Well, first I need to turn my snap to grid back on. I'll press in and then now this should snap by half note, but 
it's really snapping by, it looks like uh, eighth notes, maybe. That's because we're zoomed out a bit. Now, if I were to zoom in and then try to move this left to right, you can see now it's snapping to that half note, half a bar, quantize value. Now, if you don't want that to happen, then you can just come to the quantize or to this adaptive and then choose quantize. And then no matter what you're zoomed at, it's always going to move at whatever you have set here in your quantize value. And I'm actually just going to put this back to adaptive because that's what I'm used to working with. And one other feature to keep in mind when you're moving events and parts around in your song, if you have a particularly long arrangement uh, and you want to move an event, if we move this to out of view, then Studio One's going to start to scroll. If we hold down spacebar, then it's going to speed that up. So that's just something that we can do if we'd like to uh, make that process go a little bit faster. So I'm not holding my spacebar here and we're moving along. Then if I hold the spacebar, you can see our speed increases here. Now I'm going to press W and zoom back out a bit. We can also move our events vertically. And if we can, if we move it to another track of, so this uh, instrument part here, I can move it directly to another instrument track. If I were to move this to an audio track, then it's going to actually bounce that down to an audio file and it's going to bounce down the instrument that it originally came from. So this presence here, it's going to render down this instrument as audio on the track that you drag it to. But I'm just going to go ahead and put that back up there. Um, also, if we were to drag an event or part to an empty space, then Studio One is going to create a track that fits whatever we've moved. So if it's MIDI, then it's going to create an instrument track. If it's audio, it will create an audio track. And I'll go ahead and put that back and shift T to remove our new track. The Studio One manual uses an analogy that I like when it refers to the events here within our song as kind of windows. And they represent what we see is what we're going to hear. And they're a window to the files that are contained within our pool. So if I F10 and access the pool, then these are all of the files that are contained within this song. And I'll go ahead and close that out. We can, as we adjust and resize these events, then we're kind of closing or opening that window and, and determining what is going to be played back and what is going to be heard within our song. And we can resize by coming to the edge and then dragging in. This is going to be constrained by your whatever you have your snap value set to. And if I were to pull in this end here of this event and this one here, and then put these two right next to each other, notice that as I move down here, we get those double arrows. And this allows us to adjust two adjacent events at the same time. Now go ahead and move that one back. There are a couple other tools that I'd like to mention when we're resizing events. If we were to come to the edge of our event, of an audio event in particular, and hold down Alt, we then have the time stretch tool. And then with this, we can time stretch our audio. If we open up the inspector by pressing F4, and then be sure that our tempo mode is set to time stretch and then hold down control and alt we then have a tempo tool and then with this we can pull this audio event and set it to the tempo of our song but just be aware that you do need to have the tempo mode set to time stretch and I'm going to change that back to follow and close our inspector and the other tool that I want to quickly mention is that if I were to bring in these edges, if we're ever working with audio and we would like to slip that audio, we can hold down control and alt. And while we're in the main area of the event, we can then slip that audio like so. Now control Z to undo that and return this back. 
Another feature of our audio events in particular is that they all have a volume envelope and any adjustments that we make to the parameters of these levels will be applied to the audio clip um, in our pool. So this is going to be at the very beginning of our audio signal flow and before console faders and effects and so on. And so firstly we have the ability to create fade ins and outs if we come to the upper corner here you see we have that finger and if I click and hold then I can drag in and create a fade in or fade out and if you notice that as I drag we then have a um, readout of how many seconds that fade in or fade out is. We then also have these center boxes where we can create a curve to our fades as well. And this actually corresponds to the inspector. So if I press F4 with this event highlighted, and then I'll pull this bottom section up here, then you can see we have fade in and fade out, and they match what we have set with this event. And if I click here and just put in zero, press enter, then that returns it back as it was to its default position, zero and enter, then uh, we are back to where we started. We also have gain control here, and we can control that on the event by using the square icon and dragging up or down. This then adjusts itself here in the inspector. We also can raise this up above uh, 0 dB, and the waveform here is actually going to adjust itself. Uh, if we're raising it up you, you're, or lowering it, it's, it's going to get larger or smaller. So this is basically... It's not a duplicate, but it's pretty much the same passage uh, cello part. And you can see that now that we've raised the gain here, that's gone up. If I were to then drop this down to minus 20, then you can see it's pretty much non-existent. And then we can come in and control click on this to put the gain back to 0 dB or unity. And one other thing that I'd like to mention about working with the fades is that if I come to the either corner here to create a fade in or out, if I hold down shift while I do that, then I can drag left or right, and then move up and down to create the fade and adjust the curve at the same time. So that's by holding shift while we're creating our fade, we can adjust its length as well as its curve as well. If we were to overlap two audio events here and then press X on our keyboard, we then create a crossfade. And we can come to either end here and then change the length of that crossfade. So we can bring that in there. And if we come to the center where we have this pointer finger, we can adjust the curve of that crossfade. Another way of using the arrow tool within the arrange view, um, I'll close out the inspector, is that we can use this to select different events. So if I were to click and hold and drag, then we can select a group of events like so. We could also select one, hold down shift, and then select other individual events or parts at the same time. We could also hold down shift and double click within a track, and it's going to select all of the events on that track. And while we have multiple events selected, we can then come in and make adjustments that will reflect in all that are selected. And I'll control click to put that back. And actually, while we have our events selected, if we happen to want to make an adjustment to one individual event that's not going to affect the other ones temporarily, we can simply hold down Alt, and that's going to temporarily suspend uh, that selection selection of edits and we can then make changes to that one individual event there. So I think we'll actually wrap up here. There was actually quite a bit of information and hotkeys and different things to make note of and remember in this first part where we're working with the arrow tool uh, within the arrange view. Now in part two, we're, we're going to cover the rest of the tools here and actually it's going to go a lot quicker because the arrow tool does a lot when we're working within Studio One. So the other ones are not going to be as long. And also for tools like the Ben tool, I have a complete video dedicated to the Ben tool. And so I'm just really only going to spend like 60 seconds covering that. 
and uh, the, these other ones are pretty straightforward. So uh, part two should be up soon, and I hope that you got some good tips for working in your future songs.